Hey everybody, welcome back to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also tells you how to grow your YouTube channel if you guys are getting into that sort of thing. I'm your host, Jonathan Higgs, and I hope you guys had a fantastic Thanksgiving with your family, your friends, your loved ones, or whatever, and you had a little nice break from school or work, but unfortunately, it's Monday and we're back into the grind, but it is Cyber Monday, so try not to spend too much money out there on the internet uh, buying all those cool airsoft goodies. So I took advantage of the long weekend and really got caught up in those reviews like I was promising you guys, and I've already been through like the test and evaluation stage and been taking notes, but I was able to shoot all of the Corona readings, had some beautiful days here in Tennessee, it was nice and like 60 degrees, and was able to get those on camera, and now they're going to the green screen studio before they get produced. So stay tuned, you're going to see a ton of guns get reviewed here in the next three to four weeks, all before the holidays end, as well as a bunch of accessories. I think I had like 10 guns out there on the test bed uh, over the holiday. And of course, I don't know how many accessories I did as well with photographs and all that good stuff. But get ready. We're going to probably be at that one a day like I promised you. I know it's taking a while, but man, these things do take a long time to produce to do it the right way. But enough about what's coming up. Let's get to what's happening now. And right now, it's your questions. First up, David Campbell writes... I'm a little on the bigger size, so do plate carriers come in one size fits all? Thanks in advance. Kinda, sorta, yeah. Now, plate carriers are sized, the so small, medium, large, extra large, and all that, but that sizing is not how it fits you, it's how it fits the plate that's inside of the carrier, and this one actually has some fake plates in here. So this is a size medium. I'm actually about six foot tall, about 180 pounds, 175 pounds, somewhere in there, about 180 after Thanksgiving turkey, and I fit a medium. Now the way you measure is clavicle to belly button, and I'll get a link. I've done a video of this before as well. I think I even talked about it on a Monday's video about how to measure. But as for sizing, most of these are gonna fit just about anybody. What you're worried about here is the cummerbund, which is this piece, the strap that goes around the side on a plate carrier to make sure it'll size up big enough. Most of them are going to have pretty large cummerbunds. They're going to size down from small to large and you'll make those adjustments in the back. Like this is a JPC replica. So you're going to see like here the little elastic straps and you can move these all the way out to make it as big as you need it. And then on top of that, some carriers do have sizing. For example, like Mayflower, when you get to the nice stuff, you can buy small, medium, or large, extra large cummerbund. So you can actually size up that cummerbund to fit. I think First Spear does it as well. And uh, I've seen a few others do it too. And if this one's not enough, like for example, you're looking at a JPC, you can always move these out or get longer shot cords or kind of reconfigure these to fit them a little larger. So there's a lot of options to make things fit. I mean, you gotta think though, most of the real carriers are designed to you know, fit pretty big dudes. You know, these guys are out there, you know, kicking indoors every day. So you're probably gonna not have that much of a tough time getting it to fit you. But if you are, like I said, there's a lot of tricks to make it grow a little bit more or go with a brand like that Mayflower or First Spear where you can choose the size of the cummerbund. The Florida Airsoft Group writes, when is that loadout vid coming? All right, I'm including this one because it was my number one voted up uh, comment, but it is coming soon. I did work on it last week a little bit when I was out there doing some footage, uh, taking a lot of pictures of some of the components. It actually takes a lot of work to chronicle like all of the parts of a loadout. It's easy to throw it on and go, hey, here's what I'm wearing, but I want to do it right for you guys. I want to make sure that you know, hey, this is what I have on my helmet. This is what I'm using and try to do it in a unique way. So it is coming. It is being worked on and I'm trying to get a couple different loadout videos because I don't just usually run one. I have like a play carrier loadout. I've also got a chest rig loadout. Depending on the rifle or the, the play style I'm going for, will be very different. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. They are coming. Once I get through these videos I was telling you guys about, I will have it up probably sometime between Christmas and SHOT Show in that range. So if you guys are patient, you can wait till the end of December, early January. I'll get that up because I want to get those out of the way before the great SHOT Show videos come out. Andrew Ross writes, me and my friend have everything for upcoming team, even a course for tryouts, but we're always getting stuck on the team name because we're looking for something unique, trying to stay from the popular words like elite and tactical. What are some ways to come up with a good name? Please help. 
you know, I ran into the same problem when I was trying to pick the name of this, Airsoftology. It was actually really hard because committing to a name is a big deal. And for me, I wanted something extremely unique that had never been in existence before because I actually got it trademarked. It's actually a fully licensed trademark name. Uh, I, I was one of my requirements. But for a team name, obviously you don't have to go that route. So my suggestion to you, and this really gave me a lot of inspiration, is go to band name generators. Like go to Google, type in band name generator or you know team name generator generator and then it'll some of these will let you put in different like words like okay I really want the word you know gray in there or operational or something or you have a number like your area code like here at 615 so I want to put 615 somewhere in it you put it in you hit the randomized button it'll give you this huge list of crazy names and sometimes you can get some great inspiration from those so definitely check that out I had a lot of good inspiration from those I forget where I actually came up with where we are now actually a buddy of mine helped me with it on that one from the science side, but I had a lot of close contenders that came from band name generators or were inspired by that. So yeah, it's a good way to pick a team name and I think it's kind of an easy way to feed it to you and without having to really rack your brain and come up with something super creative and unique. Mr. Dishboy09 writes, Hello John, my question today is what would be the best approach to get your team's YouTube content and viewership up? My team's been putting out content for over a year now and are just not growing as fast as we'd like to. Thanks. You know, I could do weeks of videos nonstop, one a day, talking about how to get on YouTube, what to do, best practices, tips, tricks to get your viewership up. But I'll give you some basic ones here. First one is consistency. Set a schedule, at least with an anchor video. I mean, like here is my anchor video, right here, Mondays. You guys know on Mondays, unless I miss a Monday, you can come here and you know you're gonna get a video from the channel. Then I do two reviews a week, try to do a Wednesday and a Friday if I can get them out. Sometimes I do miss those, but as long as you have a good anchor video, you're good to go. Ultimately, I'd like to be every day of the week, but that's a ton of work. So first thing, be consistent. Set a schedule, stick to the schedule no matter what. If you're feeling like crud, still get it done. The second is look at your keywords. Make sure you're using the right keywords in there. Uh, do some search terms on the internet. There's a lot of great keyword tools. Google even has a keyword tool. So you can type in airsoft gun, CQB, things like that. It'll give you some great searches, the top searches. And uh, so use those free keyword research tools out there on the internet. And tip number three is gonna be a bit geeky, but it's something that's really gonna help you out is to go into your YouTube creator studio or your console, that's where you upload your video, and go under analytics and you're gonna look for something down there that says audience retention. It's about two thirds of the way down, at least right now when I film this, and click on it. It's gonna give you your top videos, at least for the time period. It's usually the last 28 days and it's gonna show you what time the average viewer stopped watching that video. So it's gonna say, okay, you had a five minute video, you had people on average the person is dropping at two and a half or three minutes. You're getting 50 to 60%. If you're getting a 50 or 60% retention rate, you'll actually, it'll give you a percentage as well. That is a great number. Don't be discouraged. This isn't like 90% is awesome, 70% is, you know, getting ready to fail. I mean, 50 to 60 is amazing. Above 40 is actually a good number. Below 40, you're kind of missing the mark. So you want to make sure. I've had a couple of videos that have fallen flat. I mean, they're 28% on some of them. Uh, most of mine are in the high 40s to low 60s. That's kind of the band I'm in. Some get a little above it, some get a little below it, but I try to stay in that band and that's a good healthy number for YouTube average watch. So yeah, look at that and go into each video, click on them and see at what point in that video people are leaving. Are you saying something wrong? Are you disinteresting? Is there a lull in the action? Kind of look and go and critique yourself using that. When do people get bored enough to go, eh, I'm done with this. So look at those three things and that could really help you on your YouTube, uh, you know, kind of get you started on building the channel and help you learn what maybe you're not doing right, what can be doing better, what's kind of disinteresting your audience and making sure you're getting that broad exposure. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for this week's questions, which means it is time for the video recommendation of the week. And this one, so guys, that's it for this show. And of course, if you want to get your question on the next show or any of the future upcoming shows, all you have to do is just put it down in the comment section below and vote up your favorites. I pick the most creative questions and the highest voted questions to get on the next show. And I really love your guys' support and it would help me out so much if you click the old share button down below and share this video on your favorite social media platform, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. Just click the button down there to share and spread the love so more people can enjoy Airsoftology Mondays and hopefully more people can vote up your questions to get answered. Well guys, as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see
see you next week. But until then, get out, go play some airsoft, have some fun. But no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.